snowstorms and New England go hand in hand. It comes in a variety of forms, from dry, fluffy snow to wet, heavy snow, light flurries to monstrous nor'easters, and of course, all of the sleet and freezing rain in between. Temperatures can fluctuate radically, going from sunny and ski-friendly one week to a brutal Arctic cold snap the next. Western Mass could face all of these conditions over the next few months. How do these different types of storms develop? How do towns prepare to face the next major nor'easter? And how much total snowfall is in the forecast for Western Mass this winter? Forty-five inches of snow would be about an average winter for Springfield. But many times that snow doesn't stack up so peacefully. Winter storms in Western Mass can easily produce six inches or more in one night. They can as they get ramped up, especially into a major winter storm or a really strong nor'easter like the perfect storm of 1991 or even the blizzard of 2013 as we saw this year um, can have really gigantic impacts uh, on southern New England. It depends on what time of day the storm hits, whether school's getting out or some of the major businesses. Snow is a tricky forecast because of the low and varying water content found in each snowflake. On average, the amount of water contained in about 10 inches of snow equals the amount of water found in one inch of rain. Therefore, if a raw computer model shows one inch of below freezing precipitation, it may call for 10 inches of snow. But in Western Mass, that 10 to 1 ratio often varies. If the temperature were to drop into the teens, for example, the upper teens, 15 to 20 degrees, then we're actually looking at closer to a 20 to 1 ratio, meaning you get 20 inches for the same amount of precipitation. And if it's a really cold uh, air mass, down into the lower teens, you can even get as much as 30 inches of snow. While 10 inches of snow makes a good headline, a little bit of ice that goes unaccounted for can throw off the forecast, as well as throw some cars off the roads. Just a very small temperature change, say at five to 10,000 feet above our heads, can make the difference between heavy snow, sleet, or freezing rain, or just plain rain. So it, it is very complex. In most snow events, the entire layer from the cloud to the ground remains cold enough for snowflakes to stay together from the cloud to the surface. The hazard comes in when a shallow pocket of warmer air develops underneath the cloud. In the case of sleet, the falling snowflake hits the warmer pocket and has enough time to melt into a raindrop. As it passes back through the colder layer, the raindrop refreezes and falls to the ground as a sleet pellet. Freezing rain, on the other hand, has a warmer pocket extending closer to the surface, while objects directly on the surface, such as roads, sidewalks, and trees, remain below freezing. In this scenario, the snowflake melts into a raindrop and stays as a raindrop as it falls to the ground. However, the water from the rain then freezes after coming to rest on these frozen surfaces and glazes objects under a coating of ice. Ice is, is a very labor-intensive uh, material because unless it's a, a heavy, thick accumulation, we can't really remove it from the road. All we can really do is treat it. A couple years ago, our radar was upgraded with dual-pole technology. And, and the main idea is it can detect different sizes and shapes within the particles. So we're able to detect and differentiate snow rain, uh, wet snow, freezing rain, sleet, because these particle sizes are different. Ice and freezing rain can do a great deal much more damage than, as you said, 10 inches of fluffy snow. Um, and the impacts can be greater uh, sometimes than, than a large scale storm. The 2011 October Nor'easter and last February's blizzard gave Western Mass a recent reminder of the crippling effects a winter storm can have. While its impacts were caused by heavy snow, not ice, 
The Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency still keeps close tabs on every winter storm and the potential hazards we could face. 24 hours out, we're reaching out to our other uh, partners, and I say partners, uh, Department of Transportation, Mass Highway, State Police, uh, National Guard, if we're expecting it to be that great of an impact, Red Cross. Uh, we'll gather those partners, make a plan, and they will join us in our emergency operations centers. With the blizzard of 2013, for example, the governor ordered people off the roads so that the road crews could uh, go about their business efficiently. Making that decision was not an easy decision. Obviously, you're shutting down roads throughout the entire state. The governor himself was on some of the calls with us directly uh, in coordination with the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. I have to say the overall comments to that were it was very successful. It's extremely helpful to DPW crews, whether you're talking to the city of Springfield or you're talking to the small town of Williamstown, to have those people off the roads. The major change, if it is a, a very heavy accumulation snow event, is we may not use as much salt in the beginning because we know it's going to be snowing heavily. The quicker we can get things cleaned up and the safer we can get things cleaned up, the safer it is for the, everybody else that has to be out in the roads at some point. The heavier snowstorms, um, unless it's a prolonged nor'easter, the snow removal goes fairly quickly. Um, usually when it clears afterwards, it's, you do a final shot on the roads, parking lots and sidewalks. We prefer a good, good couple of heavy snowstorms and be done with it. While temperatures impact the amount of snow and ice that falls, the cold by itself causes Western Mass homes to use energy in order to stay warm. Many times, homes can save some money by keeping the heat in more efficiently. It's always a good idea to take a look and see what's going on with the house. A home loses heat all over through the walls, the ceilings, the floors. According to the Department of Energy, 10% through the floors, 12% through the walls, 22% through the window glass, another 12% through cracks and crevices around windows and doors, and 46% through the attic, through the roof. Nescor in West Springfield specializes in installing the attic shield heat barrier to tackle that 46% loss through the attic. But other home walkthroughs and energy assessments can isolate many other sources of heat loss and turn a home project into a great energy saving investment. There's technologies today that can bring a, a older style window, a double pane or even a single pane window up to the latest low E technologies. We look in the basement, if there's copper piping, that should all be wrapped. There's a foam insulation for the pipes. Another thing we look at in the basement are um, where the floor joists go across and sit on the foundation. Many times those little pockets are not insulated. So we recommend get a roll of R19 and make it into those, cut it into the size that you need and kind of just put it in each of those pockets. Programmable thermostat's a great one. I've heard four degrees is the sweet spot. In other words, if you bring the house down much cooler than that, it takes more to warm it back up again. When we approach it as a whole house concept, we see easily anywhere from 25 to about 45% in savings. The colder days of winter can also be a problem for your car, with or without the snow on the roads. If it's going to be a zero degree, negative degree day, we know we're going to get a lot of people whose cars aren't starting in the morning, um, and, and that enables us to looking at the forecast and things of that nature, enables us to staff it accordingly so we can handle the call volume. The colder the temperature gets, the weaker your battery becomes. So at zero degrees, your battery loses 65% of its life. So it's really important to avoid a breakdown to get your battery checked prior to winter. Stick around. When we return, meteorologist Nick Morganelli reveals your winter forecast. A CBS 3 Springfield special presentation, the Pinpoint Weather Winter Outlook. No matter how well Western Mass prepares, nature has the ability to throw a curveball on occasion. Snow plows can be ready, each forecast spot on, but a major snowstorm can still create a headache for you at home. That's right, Mike. And for us, too, we deal with the snow the same way you do, so forecasting a lot of the white fluff is not something we look forward to. That's why you've got the job this year, Nick. 
Thanks, Mike. Well, just like the blizzard last February, we'll both be putting in some extra hours to take you through these events. Oh, and by the way, Mike, you've got the early morning shift. Oh, gee, that. thanks. Well, I'll make sure there's plenty of hot cocoa in the break room for you. Well, it's that time. Let's look at some of the major players we believe will determine overall temperatures this winter and how much snow will fall. Social media began buzzing about this upcoming winter back in October. Why all the hype so early? Perhaps it's because there's a lot of information available at our fingertips wherever we go at any time of day. But as with any information, you have to do your homework. We use a blend of science and experience for the day-to-day -day weather predictions, but is it possible to forecast a whole season? Let's check out the old farmer's almanac. Ah, there's a snowstorm on December 31st. Yikes. Good guess, but it's fun to follow nonetheless. Once again, this year we'll showcase some big players epic players there. What I mean is those governing our weather patterns, natural processes that produce a cold and snowy winter here in New England. If enough are happening at the same time, we may produce a landscape that would even please old Bing. Let's get one big factor out of the way, El Nino, that eastward movement of warming surface water across the equatorial Pacific towards South America. This has a history of giving us milder and wetter winters. Right now, like last year, it's not active. Its absence is not a big influence on the upcoming season and in fact may aid to ensure below average temperatures. What about the sun? Sunspot activity increased this year, but it's still on the low side. This is a check for a colder winter. North of 60 degrees latitude, the Arctic Circle, there's always snow on the ground, and snow cover in northern Europe and Asia can play a role in bringing us severe cold. Right now, Europe ranks seventh and Asia fourth for snow cover in nearly 50 years of record keeping. Arctic air is naturally made over fresh snow cover. More snow on the ground means more available cold air. Now we just need a mechanism for bringing it here. One mechanism is the Arctic Oscillation. High pressure near the surface in the Arctic region leads to a higher chance for us receiving Arctic bursts of air, and no one likes it that cold. Likewise, lower surface pressure over the Arctic helps keep the cold, dense air more confined within the Arctic Circle. The AO is showing signs of transitioning to a negative phase favoring the transport of cold air southward. The other mechanism is the North Atlantic Oscillation. This pressure pattern changes or oscillates from a positive to negative phase about every three weeks. In recent years, the negative phase has been dominating. It's no coincidence that we've seen record snowy winters in the last 10 years with numerous East Coast snowstorms responsible for that. For big nor'easters, we need blocking. Actually, North Atlantic blocking, known as the Greenland block. This is when high pressure dominates high in the sky over those regions. This ensures both a cold air supply and a storm track close to the east coast. This was the setup in early 2010 that broke numerous snowfall records for the mid-Atlantic. So a negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation is a key ingredient for a snowy winter. The NAO has been positive since spring and will likely slide into a negative phase in December and remain there for a majority of the winter season. It does appear that this winter will be on the colder side, with negative phases of both the Arctic and North Atlantic oscillations and plenty of snow cover up north to supply the cold air. We'll likely see a few bursts of severe Arctic cold with mild spells this winter, not visiting often or staying long. How about our snowfall for the winter? We're not predicting the number of snowstorms for the season. However, conditions should favor several chances for a nor'easter. The exact track will always determine the impact each storm will have. How much snow? There are indications that this winter may be similar to the one three years ago. We had 75 inches of snow that season. I remember it well. Here's the snow castle I made with my children. I believe we'll see above our average 48 inch snowfall with the potential for up to six feet. So our snow forecast for this upcoming season is for 60 to 70 inches. So finish up your seasonal preps. Winter is on the move. Thanks for joining us. From all of us here at CBS3 Springfield, have a safe winter season.